We are now here, and we'll be reaching the equinox, the beginning of autumn in nine weeks. The Earth is magnetic. It's like an enormous magnet with its two poles near the north and south pole. Our compass needles turn to these poles, guided by the lines of force in the Earth's magnetic field. We can't see this magnetic field as long as nothing disturbs it. But 150 million kilometers away, the sun is constantly firing off particles into space. This is the solar wind. As the sun turns, these particles shoot off in a spiral, traveling at speeds which bring them to the Earth in five days. The particles are deviated when they hit the Earth's magnetic field. When the flow is intense, the particles follow the lines of magnetic force and enter the magnetic field, upsetting our radio and telephone communications and often reaching the poles. There they flare up like spectacular fireworks. Just look at these northern lights. Meanwhile, back at home, it's hot. These are the dog days. But why dog days? They're named after the constellation Canis Minor, the little dog. This group of stars lies near Gemini and Cancer, constellations of the zodiac. The imaginary backdrop we use as a guide to pinpoint the planets and sun. The sun, still in the constellation of Gemini last week, is heading towards Cancer. The little dog is below. Seen from the Earth, the sun is near the constellation of the little dog. These are the dog days. But remember, it's not the sun moving, it's the Earth following its orbit. The sun only appears to move in front of the zodiac. It's only now, during the dog days, that temperatures hit their peak, even though the sun was at its height a month ago, at the solstice. Yes, it takes time to heat up the enormous mass of air in our atmosphere. And even longer to warm up the sea for you to bathe. During the dog days, we're especially aware of the sun's rays. These rays supply the Earth with the special conditions life needs to evolve. These conditions depend on a very delicate balance between the rays that the Earth absorbs and the ones it reflects back into space. Light surfaces reflect light. Dark surfaces absorb it. The polar ice caps are white and so are the clouds. The white parts of the Earth reflect the most light into space. But where the Earth is dark, in the forests and deep seas, it absorbs a lot of rays and reflects few of them back. The Earth absorbs only two-thirds of the sun's light in all, and that's not enough. It would be too cold. The temperature would be minus 18 degrees centigrade. What saves us is the greenhouse effect. The clouds and atmosphere let through infrared rays which supply heat. But then they prevent this heat from escaping into space. Thanks to the greenhouse effect, we have an average temperature of 17 degrees and a stable climate. What about pollution? Well, it may increase the greenhouse effect, but its influence on the climate isn't certain. In our oxygen-rich atmosphere, the sun's powerful rays produce ozone. There's useful ozone and harmful ozone. At low altitude, especially when it's very hot, oxygen mixed with carbon dioxide produces ozone, which is harmful to breathe. 
But at a high altitude, ozone is an active filter that absorbs the ultraviolet rays the sun bombards us with. Without this protective layer, we'd be cooked, burned, and sterilized by ultraviolet. Today, we've found holes in our protective ozone layer, especially above the South Pole. We don't yet know if they're caused by a natural periodic cycle or cumulative damage. To be on the safe side, we're limiting the use of chemicals which might damage the ozone layer, especially the CFCs in aerosols. So ozone has two different effects. Ozone produced by carbon dioxide in the air we breathe is harmful. But high altitude ozone is useful, even vital when we're exposed to the sun's rays, rays that can be dangerous, but that also keep us alive. The sun keeps us warm and even hot right now. Will it carry on supplying energy forever? Not forever, but long enough for the human race. Shining away over the last four and a half billion years, the sun has been burning up its own matter, hydrogen and helium. But in a few billion years, it will run out of fuel. But the Earth won't die of cold, far from it. Before it goes out, the sun will expand out past the orbits of the nearest planets. The Earth will burn up completely. Its atmosphere and oceans will boil away. But by then, we'll be long gone. Life as we know it lasts for much shorter periods. If the Earth's four billion year history were one year, life would only have crawled out of the oceans onto dry land in December, right at the end of the year. As for the human race, we'd have made our appearance on the 31st of December at a quarter to midnight. So the entire history of humanity is just a blink of an eye in the dimensions of the universe. But the sun will carry on for a good four billion years. We are sandwiched between a past and a future lasting infinitely longer than us. So let's make the most of the present.